My gosh, I tell you guys, this week has just been, this word has been in my heart. And it's, it's, it's like I said, it's rare that, that I get a prophetic word from God. And I, I found throughout the week that God has just been speaking that word in different scenarios. And, and while, while he was speaking that word, it just began to burn in my heart. I, go, I told one of the pastors, I go, you know, usually when I speak, I'm kind of preparing and I feel like, you know, Lord, you, you know, um, use me. I'm, I'm, you know, preparing my heart to, I, I tell you this time, I, I feel like a roaring lion ready to deliver the word of God. I, 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 I'm telling you, I feel the fire of God. I feel the anointing of God on this word. And, and, I, and I tell you, if you receive it, if you what? If you receive it, it will change your life. I promise you, it will change your life. This is the word. Define your moment. And it, in quotes, uh, the defining moment. We're in a time right now where we need to define the moment that we are in. Some of us are in a broken marriage. We have an unsaved child has gone astray. A death in the family. Lost a job. Some of you may feel great. A business is failing. You may feel sick in your body, broken, depressed, but this is the prophetic word of the Lord today. Define the moment you're in. Define your moment. This is a defining moment. This word define, this is what it means. It means to determine. Determine the moment you're in. To establish to fix, to specify, to designate, to, to decide. Oh my God, I'm, I'm. <laughs> to settle, to mark off, to bound, to explain, to expound, to interpret, to describe, to clarify, to give meaning of. And I, I'm, I'm so tempted to overshoot my sermon, but I can't. But I'm just, when I'm reading these definitions, I'm getting excited. To spell out, to put into words. Somebody say to put into words. To express in words. Somebody say express in words. We define our moment with our words and our actions. We define the moment that we are in with our words and our actions. Specifically today, one of the huge things we're going to be talking about is our words. The reason being is because really what you're saying is where you're headed. If you're talking divorce, watch out. Talk divorce for too long and you're gonna be in divorce court. I'm just saying, we're talking about defining the moment. This is the time to apply God's word. God's word ha that has been spoken. Some of us has gotten a clear word from God for our life. This is the time to redefine, re-speak that word over our life. This is that time. Our vision, the, the, to, to redefine and speak even the series that we're in, Relationship Skills. Pastor's talking about the importance of our words. Speaking life and not death. One of the things he said, anger plus anger equals, come on, the ones taking notes, right? And anger plus gentleness equals no anger or gentleness, right? But we have to define it. Um, we have been given specific instructions by God through these words that we've been hearing, 
to live a fulfilled, blessed life that God has in store for us. The instructions here. God's been giving us the word. What we say or do in this moment when we're receiving the word is a seed for our future. I say it again. What you do or say in this moment is a seed for your future. In other words, where I am right now is a harvest of the words or, uh, or actions that I have done in the past. Where I am in my life right now, you say, I don't like where I am. I don't like what my, my job. I don't like what my situation. Well, I, I just want to give you a reality check real quick. You're there from the seed that you have sown in the past. Wow. That's good. Through your own actions, through your own words. This is why it's important to define our moment and not ignore it. Somebody say, don't ignore it. That this, this, this word, this is one of those words that God just, he just, he just kept, just, it, it was just ringing in me, ignoring, ignoring. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. And, and the truth is why he said not to ignore the defining moment or this moment that we are, or that we are to define is because I, I've been so guilty and, and this is what happens, is there's things going on around our life, in our homes, in our marriages, with our children, that we just ignore. Uh, your daughter comes home from school and she wants to talk about how the girl just told her that she was, um, that she was bisexual and, and, and she, she wants to be her friend and she wants to talk with her and she wants to get her phone number. And you say, okay, dear, that's great. Um, wait, one sec, I'll talk to you, I'm watching the game. Ignoring. You're having some challenges in your marriage. You know that you too are really on a rocky place when it comes to your conversation, when it comes to your communication. And instead of taking the time to have a real healthy, somebody say healthy, conversation with your wife or your husband, you, you try to ignore it or, or, or just, it's they, like it's gonna go, to, go away. Let me go to work. Let me stay at work later. For the Christians, let me do ministry. Could it be that, you're, that the ministry that you are doing is ignoring the challenges that you have in your marriage that you should be addressing and you're doing ministry to the detriment of your marriage and you're and and now you're doing ministry but in divorce court ignoring this is what this word ignoring means it's it's it's, it's a latin word it means it comes from the word in which means not, and then uh, no, it's, it's spelled G-N-O, and it means no, and it's, it's the root word of ignorance. This is what it means, to disregard, to take no notice of. I'm not worried about that. Pay no attention to, shut one's, one's eyes to, be oblivious to. What, they were doing that? Whoa, my kid smokes weed, what? I had no idea coming home with the munchies, smelling up the whole house. I didn't even know. Push aside, 
Never mind. That's what it means. Never mind. Never mind. Look the other way. Look right through. Look past. Turn one's back on. Give someone the cold shoulder. I mean, this list goes on and on of how we can ignore moments that we should be defining. I I feel led to share this. I remember we were on vacation. We went on vacation, me and my wife. And I had this feeling in me, I was like, I felt like, I'm, I'm like this is a while ago, I felt, I felt like, you know, I just felt a little resentment towards her. And, and we had a conversation one time and that little resentment poked out. And she goes, are you okay? I had a choice in that moment. I had a choice to ignore it and say, never mind. Or to actually say, dear, I need to talk to you. You know, whenever we read together or do something together, I feel like that it's really challenging for us to do that. And you know, what we we, we did is we talked it out in a healthy manner. We worked through it. We did not ignore it. And now, you know, and and then God has given words, you know, relationship skills and all these different words to better our relationships and better our marriage. I'm not ignoring those words. I'm taking notes. Say, I got to work on that day. You know, I missed that one. I rem- um, th- this um, last week, you know, I serve in kids world. And I was not able to be here for 11 because we, we were a little short on, on the team. But what I did Monday morning is I sat at the table with my daughter and I listened to the message. And I took notes. Why? Because it's important that I do not ignore a message that is detrimental to the growth and the health of my marriage. Right? Right? This this is such a crazy revelation. The devil will take advantage of ignored, undefined moments. I just got to let that settle in. I I just. He is seeking for those moments to devour them. First Peter five and eight, it says this. Be sober minded. Be watchful. This word watchful means give strict attention to. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Now, this is what's crazy about this this, this scripture I was talking to Pastor Todd in the back. I think Christians take this as like this fun scripture. Like, the devil is seeking to whom he may devour. Um, And if you don't see the devil coming to eat you, he's not after you. Wait, is that the devil? No, good, he's not coming to eat me. I mean, if if we're not careful, but this is is what this this word means. So the word devour this is what it means. It means that to swallow. The, 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 the word, the, the, the Greek word is talking about the same way that when Pharaoh's army was in the Red Sea, how the water swallowed them up and consumed them. It's the same meaning of the word to swallow. This is one word that when I realized that it means this, I go, that's it. It means to consume with grief. To consume with grief. The word devour means to consume with grief. The enemy is searching out 
for moments that we have ignored so that he can consume those moments with grief. Come on, Pastor, that's good. This is what that word grief means. To, to, uh, it means sorrow, misery, sadness, anguish, pain, distress, agony, torment, affliction, suffering, heartache, heartbreak, broken hearted, heavy heart, heaviness of heart, right? And you thought you was just lovesick. You thought you was just a little upset. No, understand what's happening is that there's moments in our life that we are not attentive to. And, and like, like I said, I, I spoke about my marriage. Um, you know, kids that are going astray. And instead of, we, we said, we're gonna focus on words. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Instead of speaking to that moment and declaring over that moment what the word of God says, we are allowing it to happen. And what's happening is the enemy is taking advantage. That's what he's prowling for. He, he, he's, he's like, where's that ignored moment at? Tackles that moment. Before you know it, you're heartbroken. Before you know it, you got sorrow. You have pain, affliction. You're like, where's this coming from? It's not from the devil that you thought was coming to eat you. It's not the lion. It's the devil who's wise enough to understand that if we don't define our moment, he will. And this is a question, okay? First of all, the main way the, the enemy will devour us is by words, okay? By words. Words that are, uh, uh, pastor said this, we hear the, the whole little thing, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt, or words or names. That's, that's probably one of the biggest lies in history. It's, it's, it's children who are, who are, whose lives are literally wounded to the core because of what was spoken over them when they were younger. It's, it's uh, prostitutes who are on the street because of words that were spoken to them. It's addicts that are, that are doing drugs because of words that were spoken to them. And the enemy is very adamant about making sure that those words are spoken over our life. He's on his job. Are we? It's one of the main ways that he actually determines or defines our moment. And, and this is what I want to ask. I want to ask this. Um, we, you know, sometimes we could say, oh, the devil's running wild. But this is the truth. And it's a hard truth. Some of us, the devil don't need to speak any words over our lives or our family because we got that part handled. This is God, y'all. This is like, yeah. <laughs> this is a question. Are we, 
Are we our own enemy? Defining our life or our moment with an ungodly outlook or word. Is it us? That's why God has given us this word. We got to recalibrate. As I'm, you know, I'm saying define. Some of us have to redefine because we've defined it, but we got to redefine, right? How we define our life will determine our quality of life. Talked a little bit about that. You may say, I don't have a quality life. Exactly. I'll let that settle in. Some of you guys didn't get it. Right? Exactly. Let's reflect just for a quick second. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming through. This is going to get better, I promise you. Yeah, I was like, whoo, Lord Jesus. That, see, this is, this is the way that the word of God does. Sometimes the word of God has to correct us, fine tune us so that, and I'm not going to say sometimes, all the time, so that we can live the life that God has for us. If we don't make the adjustment, we don't get the result. And so it, it's as painful as it is sometimes. Oh, Lord, I was talking to my, when I was talking to my wife saying, I didn't want to talk to her. The flesh wants to stay in resentment. But I knew that that would be detrimental to my marriage. So I had to apply the word of God. That's what the word of God does. But I tell you, it's all so good. Right? The end result of it. Amen? Um, okay, we talked about that a little bit. Um, just, just a couple, well, let me, let me move to this because um, God has given me a couple of prophetic words that I just, I definitely want to share. And I want to make sure that I share them. Um, this is a word uh, for this specific group. Um, for those who have lost a loved one, I just want to, I want to let you know it's not over. This is what God is saying. Don't let ungodly grief set in. Determine your moment today or define your moment today. It's healthy to mourn. But when grief sets in, we know where that comes from. We got to look at that. And just, just for somebody who may be going through that, that is in this room, um, we have an amazing grief ministry here, all right? Every Monday night at 7 p.m. in a VIP room over here, and they're going to help you work through that in a healthy way to where, I just, I just want to tell you, yeah. It's not over. God, the this, this scripture says, he works all things for the good. It's in his plan. Keep trusting him. Keep loving him. And watch what he does. Define this moment. I'm going to go to the grief ministry. My life is not over. I'm going to put my trust in God. Right? I'm going to mourn in a healthy way. I'm, I'm saying it, but you say it. Look in the mirror and say it out of your mouth. Okay? That is a word from the Lord for you, for those who are going through that. Here's another word. God is, God is uh, speaking to the business people. Right? You may have a business that is having a bad year. Define the moment. You may have this last year has been, well, everything's going online now and my business is not doing too well. And man, well, it looks like we're going to have to shut the doors. Let me say this. Stop defining that that way. 
redefine that moment. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. They may be going online, purchasing online, but God, I believe you're going to give me wisdom that my business can prosper in this time right now, my business will be one of the top businesses that will sell even product online with your wisdom, Lord. Redefine it. It's a word from the Lord. And I'm going to reiterate this prophetic word from the Lord. This is a defining moment. Define your moment in our family, in our marriage, our children, our purpose. And you may be asking, well, that sounds all good, but how does this work? How do I define my moment? I'm so glad you asked. Right? The first one, understand this. Don't define the moment by your feelings. This is what we're good at. We let the moment define us, and then we repeat the definition that the moment gives us. Did you guys catch that? So I could be going through, I could be having a bad day. And instead of saying, I don't care what kind of day I'm having, I, I, this, I will bless the Lord at all times. This is what we do. We're having a bad day, and, and, and we let that bad day speak to us, and we say, I'm having a bad day. I can't stand this day. <laughs> define the moment. Don't let the moment define you. Right? That's what the flesh will do. It will define it that way. But if you don't already have a word from God, and some of us just simply need to refresh that word that God has given us. We need to hit the refresh button. God told me this. It looks like this, but God told me this. And this is what I'm standing on. This is what's going to happen. I don't care. They said, I don't care what they said. God said. Just hit the refresh button. But if, you're, but if you're in that season where it just feels a little crazy and you're like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what's happening. Don't get caught up in the cycle of, of redefining what the moment's telling you. It's crazy right now. I don't know. The COVID, the new, I don't know what's happening. Don't get stuck there. First step to defining your moment, Pray. Pray. A couple of scriptures that I love. One is my favorite, Philippians 4, uh, 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about what? Instead, pray about what? Tell God what you need. I love this part. This is such a key right here. And thank him. If we can begin to thank him for what he's done, it will remind us the God we serve. That's why this is important. You need a reminder, thank him. For all he has done. Next verse, please. Then you will experience God's peace. In a pandemic, what? Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand, mind-blowing. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You want to guard for your heart and your mind through crazy times while your business is going crazy, your kids is going crazy, your wife and all this is going crazy? Thank you. 
There it is. Right? Another one. Let me, let me go to Habakkuk because, because this, is, this is one that is when we're praying. This is, somebody say to the position. This is the position we want to be in when we pray. Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, please, in verse 1. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. I'm here. I'm ready to pray. I'm, I'm, I'm in position to hear from the Lord. I'm at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says. This, this word is pretty interesting. The word wait to see, it means look up. I'm not, my answer's not here. My answer's not here. Your answer, I'm going to help somebody over here. Your answer's not here. Look up. I'm going to help somebody over here. I'm going to help somebody over here. Your answer's not here. Here, down over here, over here. Yeah, I, I, know, I know your boss is rich. I know you got a rich mom. I know your dad, he banked up. But your answer is not here. The position is, look up. Wait for, lean forward. Yeah. Pastor Ty, you know, you know when we're on the front row in the church hearing the word? You, you waiting for the, that, that word from the Lord, you expecting something? You, the word is good and you like, woo! Lean forward. Right? To see what the Lord says and what he will answer my complaint, right? That's the position when you are praying. So the first step, pray, lean forward, look up, right? That's where the answer is coming from, all right? Number two, let, let, let me read this scripture first. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. Because this is what's going to happen when you pray and ask God for an answer. This is what's going to happen. Then the Lord said to me, write down the answer plainly on tablets. He's going to answer, but this is what we need to do when he answers. Write it down. That's number two. So that a runner can carry the correct message to others. Next one, please. This vision is for a future time. It uh, describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. Somebody say, it will be. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently in position. For it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Write it down. After you write it down, this is the third one. Speak it. I said it before. It doesn't matter where you are right now. What's happening right now? Define the moment with the word, the vision, the promise of God. It doesn't matter what my eyes are seeing right now. I will place my eyes on the word of God. I got to make this really clear. That I wrote down. Some of us, some of us, I mean, you got to put that thing on the wall. So you, you got to put that thing on the mirror. You got to have it in your car. You got to, I, I mean, so it's, it's seasons that we go through that you got to ever have the word of God before you because I tell you that devil is seeking to define your moment. And if you're not careful, you'll let the moment define you instead of speaking the word of God. Write that joker on your hand. Like, what did you say again, Lord? Let me. Oh, yeah. 
That's where we are. Amen. And, and speak it. Speak it. Now, this, this, this right here, um, Proverbs 18 and 21. And we're, we're going to end here. Proverbs 18 and 21. Why do I need to speak it? I can't just thank it. I can't just thank it. No, you got to speak it. You got to speak it because, but see, when God created the heavens and the earth, it, the, the scripture says God said, God said, and, and, and we being made in the image of God, if God himself had to say or said, then what do you think you need to do if you're going to speak over your moment? Michael said, what God said. That's what I said. What? I said what God said. <laughs> the tongue can bring death or life. Let that settle in for a second. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Sheesh. Some of us love to talk. Just make sure you talking what God said. Because if you not, you're going to reap the consequences. Right? So what are we speaking? Life. In this season, the word of God, what are we speaking over our moment the word, if you don't have the word, this is what we're doing. We're praying, positioning ourselves. We get the word, we write it down, and we speak that word. That's what we're speaking over this moment right now. This moment right now. Somebody say this moment right now. Where I am right now. Where my marriage is right now. Where my kids are right now. Where my business is right now. That's, I'm speaking the word of God. Define your moment. This is a defining moment to define your moment. I'm, 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 we're done. But I, I want to tell you the, de the definition of a defining moment. I read it before, but I want to read it again because we're, we're in a defining moment. And I want to remind us that in this defining moment, we must define our moment. You guys received the, words, the Lord's word today? Praise God. Once again, I'm going to read it again. A defining moment is a point in your life when you're urged to make a pivotal decision or when, you're ex when you experience something that radically changes you. When you experience something that radically changes you. That sounds like the word of God to me. Right? We should leave this place radically changed, ready to speak the word of God or seek God for his word. And this is, this is, the, this is the thing. If, 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 I, if I were to be honest, there's been times that I've been consumed by the moment and I've spoke I've let the moment define me and I've spoke out the moment instead of speaking the word of God over it. Tonight we're hitting the reset button. Amen. Tonight we're hitting the reset button. And this is my call. If you've just been in that place, let's all stand please. If you've just been in that place and you say, you know what? Man, I am. I, I just want to be honest as well. 
I've really been allowing my moments to define me and I have not. God gave me a word. I have not been speaking that word. I have not. And, or, or you may say, you may say, I don't have that word, right? From this point on, I believe God is going to speak, right? This is what I want to do as a point of contact. Come up. Let's, let's pray with you. If you just want to be honest and say that's you, that you, you just come up. We want to pray with you as a point of contact to say, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. This is, and let me say this. You're in a defining moment. Right now you are. What you're saying, what you're saying is, is that it was this way, but this word radically changed me. And now I will not be the same from this point on. This is the other call I want to make. Is that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, the enemy, the devil, this is what he wants to do. His goal, you, you, you know that list that we went through uh, uh, of grief? Do you know that that is the enemy's goal for your life? He wants us to continue in a life of grief. He wants us to continue in sorrow, be brokenhearted, be addicted, be afflicted. This is the goal. This is the purpose of the enemy for us. But oh, I have such good news. Jesus said that I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. For someone who has not experienced that, this is a defining moment. This is a time that your life can radically be changed right now. Oh, I'm excited, I'm excited. This is my call. If you're saying, that's been me, I've been experiencing this. I don't know this God. I don't know this Jesus you're talking about. I haven't been living for him. He's not my Lord. Well, if you're saying that, I want to make a call to you right now to redefine your moment so that you will, you will start experiencing instead of sorrow, joy, instead of grief, love, brokenheartedness, love instead of brokenheartedness. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to make this call to you. When I count the three, I'm going to give you an opportunity to define your moment. Um, a defining right now. Everyone, there's, there's somebody's heart right now. It's beating fast. It's beating fast. You want to know why it's beating fast? Because you're about to experience a radical change. <laughs> your life is not going to be the same after this. One. If you're saying, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior, if you're saying, I want that life, I want life and life more abundantly, I want joy, I want peace, I want the blessed life that he has for me, I want you to raise your hand when I say three, two. I know your heart's beating fast, but all God wants to do is love you. Three, raise your hand in this room. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. And I'm gonna ask you to make the next step. Define this moment right now. Come to the front. Come to the front, we wanna pray with you. I wanna lead you in a prayer. I would love to shake your hand. You are not gonna be the same after this moment. There we go. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah.
also, you're going to have a loving church family that you can get on the phone and call that will be there for you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come. Anyone else? Come. We're going to pray. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my man. God bless you guys. We're going to pray right now. And this is what we're doing. I mean, I, I, know, I know we're saying this word a lot. I pray you dream about it. I pray you dream about the word define, that you need to define, redefine. Some, like I said, redefine your moment. Define your moment. You're not going to be the same. 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 Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You're not going to be the same. Our best life is ahead of us. Let's pray, say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. You shed your blood for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day with all power and heaven and earth in your hands. Jesus, I believe you sit on the right hand of the Father interceding for me. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, change my life. Make me whole. Make me new. In Jesus' name.